Welcome to the airport, and our job is to secure the hangar and stop them from bringing drugs in through this airport. We bought all the information for this level, but some of the information was off. You see, this room lists as there being no enemies, but there is a ton of enemies. The best place to hide is over here against the wall. Everywhere else is way too open. The only thing of immediate danger is this fellow over here who can shoot us from pretty much any angle, but after that, we're all good. We're all good. I like that satellite dish up there, I didn't even notice that the first time I played this level, or the second, or third. This game's design really reminds me of a Japanese title. I think Rebellion are very underrated in the way they design games. Except for, uh, except for Rogue Warrior, but that's not their fault. No one should blame them for that. Konami and I can't remember his name, but the director of Never Dead, which is one of my favorite third-person shooters, uh, Rebellion made that game. They chose Rebellion for that. You figure they would choose a Japanese studio, but they chose Rebellion, and I'm happy for that. Rebellion were the best possible people for that job. But as I was saying, this game reminds me a lot of a Japanese title in the way it approaches game design. There are a set of very simple mechanics that play off of each other very well. I don't know where that guy's going. And they, and they use those same simple mechanics throughout the entire game, so that way they're explored to their fullest. A lot of non-Japanese games tend to uh, introduce new mechanics as the game progresses, and a lot of Japanese games tend to have the same mechanics and just explore them thoroughly across the game. This, uh, this game is the latter. What you've seen in this last level and uh, the level before that, that's what you're going to be seeing through the whole game. But that's not a bad thing. The game gets significantly better the longer you play, and it's pretty good. So there are two rooms off to the sides in here. This first one is just for deactivating the cameras, which... Well, that's... We already, we already covered that. And the second one has two floors. It's not often that uh, a level in this game has a room with two floors. You might hear one of the enemies talking shit at us, and it's that guy on the floor above us, but he's too chicken to come down here and actually do something about us. So we're gonna go up to him. I feel like it's very weird that there would just be a single person up here guarding the flash ram. But they probably didn't expect the one-man assault, either. Where the hell did they find all these guns? I feel like at several moments in this game, this game could easily be a high-end PS2 game. Which is a good feeling. It's good when your PSP game looks like a high-end PS2 game. Some of the character modeling could be better, but for the most part it looks pretty good. The characters have a smoothness that evades a lot of PSP games. This game came out in 2006, and Undead Knights, another game I'm playing, came out in 2009, has way worse graphics in every way. I suppose you could say it makes up for it with style, but pseudo-realism is a style too. I'm not sure why I came back in this room. I'm, I'm sure I thought there was a good reason. I really like this room and also really hate it because there's no good place to take cover. All of the cover is very bad for you, so we're just going to skip the room entirely instead of fighting. Now this room has the biggest explosive barrel in the game because there's a gas station. And pretty much everyone dies. There's one guy that survived behind the truck, but he took a lot of damage from the explosion too. So one shot would put him down. Yep, there we go. So there were actually two Miami Vice games, at least officially. On the record, we're going to say there are two Miami Vice games. There's this one, and there's one for the Commodore 64. The one for the Commodore 64 looks really bad, but it looks playable. Looks like they tried to make something that, uh, that worked with the license. Excuse me. I'm trying to talk here. Anyway. There's this one and the one for the Commodore 64. Those are the ones that people know about. But there's a game with very little documentation called Just Miami Vice for the PS2 that came out in 2004, I think. Two years before this one. Two years before the movie reboot, too. And you might be wondering why. Why was there a Miami Vice game that came out in 2004? 
And the answer, I think, is because Cash Grab. The game was made by a studio called Atomic Planet, at least I think that's who they were. Also, there's a neat poster up here. It's real cute. But anyway, the other Miami Vice game, the PS2 one, was made by Atomic Planet, I believe. And they are notorious for making awful, awful shooters. And I could never tell if they made them awful on purpose, or if they were trying their best, or if they just didn't care. Also, it was better to fire at the wall there, because that sucker was hiding in that little alcove, and he would have caught us by surprise if we tried to walk up. The PS2 Miami Vice game seemed like a crash grab, because looking at Atomic Planet's other games, they made a Beverly Hills Cop game around the same time, and that had no business being made in 2004 either. You want to make a beeline for this place up here as soon as you enter this room, because it gives you a vantage point over all those guys down there. Makes for easy headshots. Also, there's a first aid kit up here. The other Miami Vice game, uh, it's, uh, it's special in that it is incredibly awful, but not in a way that is entertaining. You would be hard-pressed to make a game that is more dull than that one. The only piece of design I can even think of from that game, well, the two pieces of design, are that you can switch characters at will, and that Tubbs uses a shotgun and Crockett uses a pistol. That's it. That's all I can think of. I can't think of any other design present in that video game, which is very depressing. I do want to play it for myself someday. I don't know if I could ever manage to let's play it, because I try to push my limits. Like with Deep Black, I try to play a lot of games that by all rights should never be let's played, simply to share them. But I don't know if I could do it for something like that. It's just dull beyond words. You know what, I'll actually put the trailer for the PS2 Miami Vice game in the description for you. I only talked about the gameplay, but graphically it looks like all of the characters are in immense pain and have no spines. It is hard to describe. I hate this kind of wood. If I sat on a desk like that, I would constantly worry about getting splinters. Absolutely hate it. So this last room, we have a good vantage point over all the enemies like we did in the one just a bit ago. But they immediately hide as soon as we pull our gun out. So even though we caused a massive explosion that caught the plane on fire, it didn't really do anything to hurt the enemies. Even though it shook our sc we're sliding. Even though it shook our screen. This room is not that bad gameplay wise. The difficulty in here is uh, kind of mediocre. There's this single cart right here that's easy to hide behind. And you can shoot at everyone from here. So there's no reason to ever leave this spot. All the other cover is less advantageous too. Also getting a bit lazy with shooting, because this is the last room. We do have to head out the door. For some reason the stage doesn't just auto-end, like the objective would imply it does. Can't we just, like, force Freddy to talk to, uh, talk to us about stuff with guns? I mean, that might not be ethical, but still. Anyway, we got one of the most important flash rams in the game. The Weed Baron location. It is... it is necessary for the way we're playing the game. If you don't get the Weed Baron location, you're a chump and you should feel bad. Also, this minigame is really easy. You might think it would be harder with all these shots going everywhere, but the shots blow up everything. Except you, so, you know, pretty easy. Just gonna skip to when we're done here.
Now we can visit the Weed Baron, but only if our reputation is high enough. And we're gonna save because there's a mini game involved in visiting the Weed Baron. Well, let's go see him. Talk business. Let's see what you got. I'm on the level, man. I ain't lying, man. Quit messing me around. Your turf, your rules. I've seen worse. Okay. Let's talk. Okay. You got us doing deal. business with Show you. him out. Jesus, that is a large amount of cash. A very, very large amount of cash. So we have all the shopping money we need for now. We're gonna go upgrade our swag suit some more. Oh god, I said the word swag unironically. Oh. We're gonna upgrade our reputation suit all the way. We're not gonna mess with anything else really, except maybe a shotgun upgrade. Maybe a single shotgun upgrade. For the next level, we're not going to need any suits or upgrades, though, really. I always upgrade the shotgun first, I thought. Oh, wow, holy shit, I am wrong about my own brain. That's perfectly okay, though, because the pistol kicks ass, especially when it's fully upgraded, which it is now. We can't upgrade the pistol any further. The next level we're going to is very weird, and I'm not sure why these levels exist. They're not bad or anything, but they're very strange, and they feel disconnected from the rest of the game. But I suppose we'll see about that when we get there, won't we? Let's go give it a look. Customs intercepted the smuggler plane. If you're going in there, seize its dope cargo. There's probably enough incriminating evidence to keep a grand jury busy for a year. 